Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, board partners respond to RTX 3080 issues, 3060 Ti specs and release timing gets confirmed, the 20GB 3080 and 3070 Ti release timing, and AMD's 6900 XT, 6800 XT, and 6700 XT full specs leak. Okay, it's news time and first up for today I've got an update to the recent story I did about issues people were having with their RTX 3080s specifically on them crashing to the home screen when getting clocks over 2 GHz. Since then, a few AIB partners have responded, and it does look like the initial findings by Igor's lab were correct. For those who didn't see that video, the issues mostly boil down to which capacitors board partners used. Now, even the better capacitors seem to have issues, but those are likely something else. Basically, there may be other problems causing the crash, but board partners who use the better capacitors seem to have less. Regardless, board partners have responded to the complaints and Tech Power Up put together a nice list of responses, so let's go over them. First up, we have a Zeus, who apparently found the issue during testing and used the better capacitors before production. Next is Colorful, who was the first to address the issue and has recalled review samples. EVGA also discovered the issue during testing, which was why they delayed their FTW model. Next is Gainward, who basically said their boards are fine and reminded everyone of their warranty. Next is Galax, who essentially did the same. Then there's NO3D, who simply stated that their cards don't have any issues. Next is MSI, who acknowledged the issue but thinks it's a driver problem, yet they seem to be quietly changing their cards. Finally, we have Zotac, who according to Igor's lab, the parent company is fixing it, and Zotac themselves confirmed that they are still investigating the issue. All in all, it is good to know that companies are trying to fix things, but of course, no one can get a card right now anyway. With that said, when they are back in stock, make sure to check out the Gamer Meld kit, where I make hardware suggestions based on the component type. I also give a short description of why you may or may not want a certain part. Not only that, but I've added a couple new 3000 series cards that I suggest, so visit kit.co slash gamermeld today. Speaking of all the cards coming out, in a new report by Video Cards, we now have both the specs and release timing of the RTX 3060 Ti, as well as the launch plans for the 20GB 3080 and 3070 Ti. In fact, they're officially calling this confirmed. So first up, it looks like the RTX 3060 Ti will in fact be the next GPU launching in the RTX 3000 series. The Ti model apparently still features the GA104, but the non-Ti model features a new GA106. As for specs, the RTX 3060 Ti comes with 4,864 CUDA cores, which is 1,024 cores less than the RTX 3070. It also comes with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory clocked at 14 gigabits per second with a memory bus width of 256 bits for a total of 448 gigabytes per second bandwidth. According to video cards, the boards are rated at 200 watts, so reference boards are likely around 180 watts. According to internal roadmaps, the card is expected at the end of October. Finally, Video Card states that NVIDIA plans to launch both the 20GB RTX 3080 and 3070 Ti after AMD announces their RX 6000 series. Basically, NVIDIA has a ton of plans for way more cards in the near future. Hopefully they don't all sell out in half a second. Lastly for today, we have a couple different leaks that essentially help give us the full specs of AMD's upcoming RX 6000 cards. The first leak is really interesting because it actually comes from Newegg's official blog. It's called Newegg Insider, and in a recent story they ran, Newegg actually listed the upcoming RX 6000 GPUs. Now, here's the thing. Video Card seems to think that these are speculations based on the recent rumors, but I'm not sure. Newegg certainly would have insider information on the upcoming cards, and they've since taken out the 6000 GPUs from the article. And that makes me wonder. I mean, if it was simply speculation, why take it down? Why not just make that more clear? Plus, they actually gave a base clock, which I don't think has really been seen. Regardless, let's take a look at what they said. As you can see, the cards were listed with older generation GPUs, and starting things off, we have the RX 6700 XT, which comes with the same number of stream processors as the 5700 XT, yet oddly enough with a lower base clock of 1500 MHz. 
It also only comes with 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 on a 192-bit bus and a TDP of 150 watts. Next is the 6800 XT which apparently comes with 3840 stream processors, the same base clock of the 6700 XT, 12GB of GDDR6, a 192-bit bus, and a TDP of 200 watts. And lastly is the RX 6900 XT which comes with the predicted 5120 stream processors, the same base clock as the other two, 16GB of GDDR6 on a 256-bit bus and a TDP of 300 watts. Now those are quite close to the rumors and leaks we've seen so far which really could mean this is the real deal. But it's not the only leak we have today. The next leak is an update from a redditor we saw not long ago. He actually found the information in Mac OS 11 and AMD's recent ROCM software update. This time we have new GPUs as well as power limits and clocks on the others. So starting things off we pretty well know that Navi 21 which is AMD's big big Navi comes with 80 CUs. There have also been two variants found with the 21A variant getting a boost of 2050 MHz and the 21B getting 2200 MHz. Next we have Navi 22 which comes with the same 40 CUs as the RX 5700 XT and it comes with an unreal maximum clock of 2500 MHz. Next is Navi 23 which comes with 32 CUs. And finally we have the next next gen Navi 31 which features the same 80 CUs as Navi 21 but of course we'd be looking at like an RX 7000 series with this. Finally, the leaker even found specs for AMD's upcoming APUs. First is Cezanne which apparently still comes with up to 8 Vega CUs. Then we have Van Gogh which does come with 8 CUs but we've seen they're likely finally going to use RDNA 2 based iGPUs. And lastly is Rembrandt which apparently comes with up to 12 CUs. At the end of the day, when it comes to AMD's upcoming RDNA 2 cards, things are looking fairly good, though as usual, it'll very likely come down to price. So while that does it for today, are you holding out for Big Navi, or are you planning to pick up an RTX 3000 card? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day!